Um, welcome to Worship at Olivet Presbyterian Church for September 26th, 2021, Confidence in the Power of Prayer. Our welcome words today come to us from Mother Teresa, who wrote, God shapes the world by prayer. The more praying there is in the world, the better the world will be, the mightier the forces against evil. Let us continue to ponder these words as we begin with our call to worship. Are any among you suffering? Then let us pray. Are any cheerful? Then let us sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? Then let us turn to each other for God's healing touch. The prayer of faith will save us and God will lift us up. Join with me now in our prayer of invocation. Maker of heaven and earth, remind us this day that you are our strength and our shield. When we suffer in body and spirit, the prayers of the faithful restore us to health. We come to you, O God, that we might be rescued and healed. We come to praise your holy name. Amen. And now we'll sing Blessed Jesus at Your Word. Please join me in our prayer of confession. Embodied God, remind us that we are surrounded. We are surrounded by the people that you have created and by the many gifts that you've given them to share. Remind us of our own gifts and the ways we may use them in community. Amen. Surely the good news is that beloved in Christ Know that you are God's own. Through divine love, you are free to begin anew and the work of living in compassionate community. Having recognized the many gifts that we bring and receive from one another, let us share what we have in gratitude. For all the gifts that we have received, and for all those that we will use in service to our neighbors uh, and our aliens in our midst, as enjoined by Christ himself, let us join in prayer. May these tangible gifts make known to the world that God is within us and among us always.
reading today comes to us from James chapter 5, verses 13 through 20. Are any among you suffering? They should pray. Are any cheerful? They should sing songs of praise. Are any among you sick? They should call for the elders of the church and have them pray over them, anointing them with oil in the name of the Lord. The prayer of faith will save the sick, and the Lord will raise them up, and anyone who has committed sins will be forgiven. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being like us, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain. Then he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain and the earth yielded its harvest. My brothers and sisters, if any among among you wonders from the truth and is brought back by another, You should know that whoever brings back a sinner from wandering will save the sinner's soul from death and will cover a multitude of sins. Here ends the reading of God's word. May it prove to be a blessing to our hearing, our understanding, and our living in the days ahead. Amen. So how is your prayer life? Well, when the spirit contacts you, does the message go to spiritual voicemail? Are you only available in certain places or certain times? Do you invite others into prayer or do you just go it alone? Are wild horses stamping the ground impatiently nearby when you're asked to pray publicly? Yeah. Well, depending on the past experiences and understandings that you might have, I suspect that your answers to those questions fall into, well, rather common answers, actually. There are not any incorrect answers, by the way. We assume that we should be pretty proficient at praying as followers of Christ, and we're pretty ashamed at the times when we're kind of, well, lack confidence in our power of prayer. In reality, proficiency or perfection is not expected. We may think it is, but it's really not. And there will be times when each of us will struggle to pray, that is, to communicate with God. And the times when we'll most struggle is probably when we're praying publicly, because there are others listening. Sometimes there will be a situation in which we may long to pray, to listen to the spirit, but there are not any words that seem adequate to the task. And there may be occasions when we don't feel that we can spare the time to pray because we are surrounded by an army of first priorities that are clamoring for our limited attention. Well, James encourages us to be doers of the word. And we've heard in prior weeks exactly what he expected of this time. Disciples who disciple others, who grow in depth and breadth of their faith and their relationship with God. Those who engage in meaningful and transformational relationships in service with others to change human society so that it becomes just and merciful and loving for everyone according to God's plan. And the affirmations, the affirmations that we say to ourselves and to others that helps make us understand that we are created in the image of God, that our brothers and sisters, the strangers in the street, all bear this image. But prayer, James wants to remind us this time, prayer is central. It's central to living a faith-filled life. He believes that prayer is effective and that Christians should be confident in their prayers confident that God answers all prayers. This epistle of doing the word, activity, not passivity, 
of putting faith to work in the world and of living out salvation in ways that impacts the world around us, rather than waiting for the end times for Jesus to do the heavy lifting. It also believes that prayer is the power that we need to use now and to use it well. James urges us to have the confidence in the power of our prayers. Prayer is another means, he tells us, of living the word and ensuring that the word lives in the lives of everyone. Prayer is the healthy communication of spiritual relationship. As Reverend Dr. Derek Weber wrote, prayer can be the launching pad to action and then a reflection on the action that's been done. And through it all, prayer is a way of being reminded of the presence of the Spirit in everything that we do. Now, I can tell you that in times past as a pastor, I have been asked to write prayers that others might use when they don't have the words or fear that they would not use the proper format for prayers. They figure that, well, somebody who's ordained ought to know how to write a prayer. And somebody who's not ordained, well, probably not up to the task. But nothing could be further from the truth. The Psalms, hymns, devotional books, or websites are powerful resources that we have at our disposal today. You might take a verse of a hymn or of a psalm and repeat it silently or out loud. If words are not sufficient for what is on your heart at the time, use silence or music. Prayer is a time for listening as well. So make sure that you've made time to listen to the Spirit. Now, some pray while they work or while they garden or while they sew or crochet. There are books now with pictures that we can color with colored pencils as one prays. And there are other books that coach people on how to pray while coloring. Now, some people create a special space in their homes and a time, a special time for prayer. Some pray as soon as they rise in the morning before they do anything else. Some prefer to light a candle and do that in the evening. Some, for some, prayer is a conversation. For some, prayer is integrated with exercise. For some, prayer is chanted. And some prayers are just pure memorization, like the Lord's Prayer. We teach that to the very young, and it's a prayer that all of us probably know quite well. Some prayers are spontaneous, not memorized whatsoever. And some prayers are very private, and others are shared publicly. And there's no length of time necessary for a prayer. So those of you who are hoping that the pastoral prayer can be shorter this week, I'm rooting for you. But there really isn't any time limit. James says we should pray. We should pray with the sighs of our hearts, pray with the songs of our souls, and we should pray. He doesn't tell us how many times a day we should pray. It could be five, it could be three, it could be once. It's all good. He tells us that we should pray together when it's possible to call on help when our own prayers may seem to be bouncing against the ceiling, lost in the clouds above our heads. Sometimes corporate prayer is what it's called when we pray together in a community of faith. Sometimes that gives us a spiritual feeling that we are not alone. And that can be reassuring and give us confidence in itself. 
James seems to have more confidence in prayer than we probably do today. The power of prayer, he says, the prayer of faith, the prayer of the righteous is powerful and effective. And we are called, he tells us, to heal the community, not just the individuals, but we are called to heal the community. He tells us it's sin, but whatever brokenness there might be in the individual or in the community, the thing that weakens it, the thing that makes us less able to be in relationship with God and with each other. We are, he tells us, to make sure that everyone has a place, that they understand that God wants them in relationship with each other and with God. And everybody has a place in their hearts for God. A place that honors them for the good, for the community as a whole. Well, quite a lot depends on our prayer and our confidence in our prayers. Let's resolve today, now. Let's resolve to make our prayer life a priority to heal our community, to heal the individuals within it and to restore them to relationship with God. Amen. Please join with me in prayer. Gracious Lord, you've asked us to be the salt, to savor, to add savor to your world. We cannot be bland witnesses that hang back and watch things happen. Watch ugly things happen to the world and the people that you love. Only working when it's convenient for us or praying or doing work when we have a little time. If we lose our saltiness, you tell us in the gospels, it cannot be regained. So we ask Lord that you give us courage and joy in our service to you. Help us to be the people who clear all the obstacles out of the way to service, rather than those who place roadblocks and potholes into which people can stumble and fail. Many are called to serve with each other and to serve you. Help us to be the people who work willingly with others not demanding that our way is the only way, but rejoicing in a new approach to ministry, one that Jesus has outlined many times. And give us, Lord, the confidence in our prayers and joy in all that we do together. For we offer our lives and our prayers to you in the name of Jesus Christ, who taught all of his disciples to pray, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. And now let us join in our closing song.
today and every day, take care of one another, knowing that each of you is God's gift to this community and to this world. We're grateful that you joined us today for worship at Olivet Presbyterian Church in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. And we hope that when you are in Cedar Rapids on a Sunday morning at 10 o'clock, that you join with us in worship of our Lord. We are indeed the little church on the corner with the big heart for service. May you have a blessed week.